Um, I was just raising my eyebrows at the discussion of New Zealand wine because my partner's here tonight, she's from New Zealand and we love our Kiwi Savvy. Uh, two weeks ago we paddled on sea kayaks from uh, Wilson's Prom and almost made our way across to Tasmania and I, I might just uh, venture the point that we might have to paddle our kelp kayaks to New Zealand to get our wine if we're going to drink Kiwi wine from now on. So, um, yeah, that's, a, that's unfortunate. Um, so, I'm the director of Australian Ecosystems, we're an ecological restoration company. We've got a nursery at the Eastern Treatment Plant in Carrum. Over the last 12 years we've, uh, we've grown around 15 million plants and restored rivers and creeks and waterways and wetlands. Uh, we do most of the stormwater treatment wetlands uh, on housing estates around Melbourne. Um, we've also got botanists and ecologists who are working all over the state monitoring the health of ecosystems. And over the last 10 years, uh, we've seen some really quite dramatic uh, declines in, in ecosystems. For instance, we're monitoring the Gumbau Forest at the moment on the Murray as part of the Living Murray program, and we're watching that whole system decline. Uh, we're seeing you know, massive red gum deaths, and those, uh, those forests are now de uh, actually becoming carbon emitters. They're, they're degassing. Uh, so it's, it's those direct observations of ecosystems uh, in transition through climate change that really prompted us to... Uh, to make a philanthropic grant uh, towards establishing Climate Positive, which is a not-for-profit that works with the community. Uh, we also do, we do some consulting with government um, and also large, cor large and small corporates to understand global warming, understand the risks, the uh, projections and the solutions to measure their footprint, understand their carbon footprint, to reduce that as much as possible, uh, to offset their residual footprints through investing in good emission reduction projects but also to go beyond that sort of neutral approach by actually dealing with some carbon debt. So we go beyond that, we actually replant uh, carbon-rich forest sinks to draw carbon out of the atmosphere because we actually believe that atmospheric carbon levels are at dangerous levels now. We've gone beyond a, a safe threshold and we actually need to recognise that we act actually have to remediate the atmosphere. There's this massive carbon load up there now and it's actually doing its damage and it's driving a lot of what we see in the media now and it's driving some quite fundamental changes uh, to, to the planet. So that's a, a little bit about climate positive. Um, the science underpinning global warming is now unequivocal. Uh, the, IPCC, uh, the IPCC, uh, which is the lead scientific organisation amalgamating the science uh, globally, uh, it, it has uh, you know, observed direct observations of increases in global temperature, wides, widespread melting of snow and ice, and uh, measurable rising uh, global average sea level. Uh, we've seen, uh, since 1990, affirming of that consensus around the science from 1990. Is there warming? Yes. Is it human-induced? Perhaps. Through to 2007, the warming's real and measurable and it's unequivocally driven by human-based, uh, human-source greenhouse gas emissions. So I'm not telling you anything new here. Uh, there's been a, you know, a global a detective's, uh, uh, you know, uh, crime-solving uh, attempt to identify the exact uh, causes of the, of, of the warming and very sophisticated climate modelling has taken uh, all, the, all the other background influences on that warming out and, and isolated it to human source greenhouse gas emissions. So the science is there, it's very robust and on the basis of that uh, governments globally are responding and setting policy frameworks and in this case in Australia we're looking at setting uh, a policy, uh, we're, we're looking to cap greenhouse gas emissions between 450 parts per million and 550 parts per million. That's what the, uh, the, the Garneau review is, is, is talking about as, a, uh, as the, the, the targets. Uh, if you look at the EU, the, the top targets they're aiming for are around 450 parts per million. With climate positive, one of the things we do is we track uh, the breaking science. So we've, we amalgamate all these breaking uh, news feeds and, and scientific uh, you know, research papers that, 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 um, that come to the surface quite regularly. And uh, we're, at the moment, we're, we're watching uh, the reporting of, uh, as I said, ecosystems under quite uh, fundamental transition. And climate change uh, is quite clearly running ahead of what the IPCC has been projecting. So we're seeing some quite you know, dramatic changes um, uh, in the real world. And we're starting to see very prominent scientists actually questioning the, the targets of 450 parts per million as a safe threshold to stabilise greenhouse gas emissions. People like Sir David King, uh, the UK's Chief Scientific Advisor from 2000 to 2007, uh, making statements uh, such, as, such as this one here. If you don't want runaway climate change, we really need to be stabilising atmospheric carbon emissions at 350 parts per million and we're currently at 387. 
So what he's saying is we, we basically need to go to uh, as close to a zero emissions economy as soon as possible and we actually need to sink some of the carbon that's up there that's doing its damage now. Other interesting scientists, uh, people like um, uh, Vyacelov Maslovsky, who's the lead oceanographer for the US Navy. He uh, works with their, the US Navy nuclear sub-program. Uh, they've got the most comprehensive records on the Arctic ice sheet that exists because for, for the last 40 or 50 years their nuclear subs have been punching through the ice to dummy fire missiles. Um, and they've measured, uh, you know, they've got the, the most comprehensive uh, records that exist. He's tracking the demise of the Arctic ice cap at the moment and he's saying the IPCC was projecting that it might, uh, might completely melt by 2030. Uh, this guy's now saying it'll be gone by 2013. Um, he's now making policy recommendations to the US government that we don't need subs, we'll be actually needing a, an aircraft carrier to patrol those waters, they'll be open waters. Um, so these are quite dramatic ecosystem changes that are running ahead of the science and uh, you know, that's very significant, that's 7, 000, uh, 7 million uh, square kilometres of ice that's been reflecting solar radiation back out into space. Uh, it's like a big air conditioner on top of the planet. Uh, if, that's, if that goes by 2013, uh, basically all that dark water will be absorbing heat and it, it could destabilise things like the Greenland ice cap, which you see in the centre to the bottom of that. And that's, uh, that's where you'll, you could generate you know, these quite dramatic sea level rises. Um, You've got uh, people like Nicholas Stern uh, from the Stern Review. He's come out in the last four weeks uh, saying observed climate change is running ahead of the modelling that underpinned the Stern Review. Uh, and if you remember the Stern Review, that was, you know, it was quite sober reading, saying that if we don't actually arrest and control and deal with climate change, then it could crash the global economy. You know, we could see a, an evaporation of 20% of GDP. So um, he's, he's, he's saying that the, the, uh, the, the climate change we're observing is running ahead of... of, of uh, of the modelling that he used in 2006. And the other interesting science that coming, that's coming out at the moment is NASA. Um, uh, the NASA Goddard Institute